Okay, good evening. Welcome to Parshashir. Uh, only a very short offering this evening, just so that we, that we do have something to say at the Shabbos table. Of course, we, the focus is going to be on Purim, with the previous Halacha Shir and then some, uh, the, the upcoming uh, Purim Shir soon. But uh, let's just share one idea on uh, Parshas Vayikra. Uh, something really, really fascinating. I saw this in Rabbi Emanuel Bernstein's Sefer, um, or I heard it from him. I've got it in my notes. I, I actually looked in the Sefer, I couldn't see it, but I must have heard this from him directly, or yeah, I forget exactly when he comes to school. Maybe he spoke, I, I don't remember, but it's in my notes. Parshas Vayikra and Sefer Vayikra begins with this. If you look at the first box, if you're listening online, please email me at j.golker at gmail.com. I'll send you the handout. Vayikra el Moshe, Vayidabe Hashem Elov Meyel Meid Lamer. Speak to the Bnei Yisrael, etc., etc. Note that in Pasuk base, Daber al Bnei Yisrael, Va'amarto Alehem. So you've got a combination of those two words, Daber and Omarto. What does that mean? So there's a very, very interesting Rabbeinu Bachai. The Rabbeinu Bachai says, Daber al Bnei Yisrael, Tzivahu, Sheyeidiyem inyan karban ha'ila bichlal. He commanded them, there is something called the carbon oila. One of the main carbonists is called the carbon oila. Bichlal, in general. Va'omarto alehem is the prat, is the detail. She'yeidim prate ha'pula she'karbon ha'oila. They should know all the details of the carbon oila. V'hu, she'yei mafshit, um naseach. You, you, you flay the carbon, you take the skin off it, and then you cut it up. V'inin ha'shechita she'tia betzofoin. V'lo b'shah ha'ruches, it's got to be in the north, not in other directions, in the north of the, of the Beis HaMikdosh. V'chein she'yei di'yein, mi ha'shechet, who is going to be the, who can shecht it? Does it have to be a coin? It can be actually anybody. It doesn't have to be a coin to shecht it. V'ha'eitzim she'im k'shem le'karbon, what type of eitzim? I.e., all the details. You learn Meseches Zvachim and Menachos. There's, you know, you go to Brisk and you, learn, you spend your life learning that. It's a lot of detail. V'zeh bir daber abnei Yisrael v'amart aleihem. That's pshat in the second pasuk. Daber abnei Yisrael v'amart aleihem. The vision, the big general rule, i.e. there's something called carbon oil, and then amart aleihem, all the protein. And that's how it works throughout the Torah. Whenever you have a Daber Abnei Yisrael v'omar to Alehem, that's really what's going on. The big detail, the, sorry, the big vision, the Klal, and then the Prat. Ha-Dibur al-Klal ha and the Loshan of Dibur is on the general Klal, v'ha-Amira ala Prateha, on the details of the Mitzvah. And he gives examples. For example, in Bamid Batesvov, Lamed Ches, Daber Abnei Yisrael, Sheba Mitzvah Sitzis, there's a concept, there's a mitzvah in general called tzitzitz. And that's, of course, Torah Shabal Peh. That's Torah Shabal Peh. Etc., etc., etc. Okay, that's the Omar to Alehim. So that's the rule of the Rabbeinu Bachai that whenever you have Dabel B'nei Yisrael, Vomar to Alehim, you have the Klal and then the Prat. Now, Using this Rabbeinu Bachai, we can understand something fascinating with the Vilna Gaon and the Apostle Kintelim. This is just amazing. This I saw in the writings of Shlomo Zalman Orbach. I don't think this I saw in Rabbi Emanuel Bernstein. Maybe it was from him, I forget. But either way, it fits in very beautifully with what this Rabbeinu Bachai says. The Pasuk says in Tehillim, in Kufyu Tes, in Ois uh, Sin, Shin, Sin, at the end, Sorim Rudafuni. David HaMelech says, Sorim Rudafuni Chinom. Princes are chasing me for no reason. And from your words, my heart is scared. And I rejoice over your words. Says the Vilna Gaon. When David HaMelech was appointed as a king over Kad Israel, and Achitofel, okay, they were jealous of David HaMelech. K'moshe Kosov, Vayikanu L'moshe B'machana, they were jealous. Miheim HaKnoim, L'ish HaSheh Oilu L'Gdula, who were those people who were jealous of someone who had, uh, had risen to prominence, had become uh, a leader of the Jew, or king of the Jewish people? Rak HaNoshem HaSheh Ito B'machana HaDoimim Lo. Similar, people of similar ilk. Avul HaNoshem HaPshutim HaSheh Ein Lohem Dimyon L'ish 
Somebody, a straightforward, a simple person, is not going to be jealous of David HaMelech that he became the king because that wasn't on his radar. It wasn't shy for him to become a king. Therefore, when David HaMelech was appointed as a king of the Jewish people, they were also giants, and therefore they were jealous of David HaMelech. And they started spreading slander that he wasn't worthy of being a king of the Jewish people. And what was their pretext? Because it says, And therefore, David came from Rus, who was from Moyav, that was what their allegation was. Okay, now, Famously, they say that it's only the males from Amoin and Moyav and Moyaviz, and it's the males from Moyav and not the Amoinis and not the Moyaviz. It's only the male folk who can't come in. Therefore, according to Tersh Abal Peh, David HaMelech is a legitimate, worthy king of Klan Israel. Now, let's look at our Pasuk again. What are you scared of? Dibur, your words. What do you rejoice about? Sos onoichi al imrosecho. I rejoice over your words, your amira. Says the gro, a penultimate paragraph. Vihine. Dibur le shaykh el irak al tersha bichsav. Like the Rabbeinu Bachai says above in our parsha, that Dibur is an expression that relates to Torah Shebichsav. It's talking about the Torah. Daber Bnei Yisrael. Mipnei Shebatayra Shebichsav Motzinu Vayedaber. Gam Vayyome Avav Vayedaber Le Motzinu Batayra Shebal Peh. When you have, for example, he says Rakhamira Motzinu Kagoyin Omer Abaya. The Gemara says the whole time Omer Rava Omer Abaya Omer Yechon Omer Shlokish. It's always Omar. It's not Diber Vayedaber in Torah Shebal Peh. Now, says the Vilna Gaon, I can understand this Pasuk in Tehillim. Because it says, These there are princes, great people are chasing me for no reason. That is referring to Doeg and Achitofel, who were jealous of David HaMelech. And from your Dibur, from the Torah, written Torah, I was petrified. Why? Because from the Torah itself, it's not clear that I can, I'm, I'm a legitimate king. Because Ammon and Moab are not allowed to come into the Jewish people, and therefore maybe I indeed am illegitimate. <laughs> but the Pasuk continues and says, I rejoice on your Amira. Because that is what permitted me to come into the people of the, of the congregation of Hashem. Because it's Moyav, Velo Moyavis, and therefore I am legitimate. So, using this idea of the Rabbeinu Bachai and this week's Sedra, you see a, an, an amazing interpretation of this Pasuk in Tilim. So, just to summarize what have we said, by, uh, in the beginning of Pashas uh, Vayikra, Daber Bnei Yisrael Marto Aleihem, says Rabbeinu Bachai, that's the Torah's way of selling us. You have a klal, and then you have a prat. Vayidabe is always a Torah lotion for a klal. And Vomart Aleihem, check out Gemara, Zvachim, Menachos, etc. for the detail. Amir is always referring to Torah Shabal Peh, Om Rabaya, Om Rava, etc. And that's true with Sitzis, Dabel Bnei Yisrael. There is a concept, there is a general rule called Sitzis. Vomart Aleihem, all the details of Sitzis. So too, says the Vilna Gaon, I was scared about your Dibur because maybe I was an illegitimate uh, person. I could not join the ranks of Klal Yisrael and I was not uh, worthy of being a king. However, because of the Amira of the Torah Shabal Peh, which explained that it refers to Moavi, Moavis, and therefore Rus was Moavis, therefore there's no problem. I am now a legitimate uh, person to be a Melech in Klal Yisrael.